OK, so what we have here is y equals x squared minus 5x minus 14. And we want to solve this quadratic. Now, your question might have said, you know, find the zeros um, of the equation, or find the, or find the roots of the equation, or the zeros of the function. Um, and what they're pretty much meaning, asking us is find the values of x when y equals 0. And what that means is when y equals 0, that's going to lie on our x-axis. So therefore, these values of x are going to be our x-intercepts. So to solve this, the first thing we need to do is we need to replace our y, or our output value, with 0. OK, so now what we need to do is solve this. Now, when using inverse operations for a linear equation, we got every, all the x's on one side and then isolated them. But there's a problem because we have an x squared and x, and we can't combine them, nor can we just isolate them to one variable. So we're going to have to come up with another method, which we call the zero product property. So to apply the zero product property, we have to take our equation in standard form and rewrite it into intercept form. Notice intercept form, we have a product of what we call our two factors. So to do that, I'm going to create a nice little box because the multiplication of two numbers or two factors is going to produce a product, right? And a product we can represent by an area. So if I want to represent this as the area of a rectangle, now I'm breaking up into four sections because what we're going to have is four separate terms, which we call our factors. So the first one, we have an x squared, and then we have a negative 14. And what our goal is now is to decide what numbers are going to go into this box to give us our middle term. So to do that, we can first start with what two numbers multiply to give us the area of x squared? Well, our side lengths of this smaller little rectangle, or actually a square, in that case, would be x times x. Then we look at negative 14 and say, all right, what two numbers could multiply to give us negative 14? Well, there's a lot of options uh, with that. You could have, so negative 14, there's a couple different options. You could do negative 14 times 1, 14 times negative 1, 2 times negative 7, and negative 2 times 7. However, what we need to do is we know that this whole box needs to add up to this. Therefore, these two boxes need to add up to negative 5x. So I need to look at which, which one of these is going to add up to a negative 5, and then we can just include the x. Well, the only answer is 2 and negative 7. Therefore, I can say this would be 2. And this is negative 7. However, 2 and negative 7 gives us negative 5, not negative 5x. So I'll make sure I include the x's in there. So now this area adds up to this. Because if I was to write this out, x squared minus 7x plus 2x minus 14, well, these are the same terms, right? They're like terms, so I can combine them. So x squared uh, minus. 5x minus 14. So everything that's represented in that box right now is the area adds up to here. But we're not concerned about the area. We're concerned about what are the side lengths of this box that, are going, that I'm multiplying by to give us the fact, which we call the factors, which is going to give us an equation that's in this form. So if I know x times x gives us x squared, x times what gives me negative 7x? Well, that would be a negative 7. And then x times what gives me 2x? Well, that would be a positive 2. And then 2 times negative 7 would be the area of this box, which is negative 14. This is now what's important, because now I can rewrite these as my two factors, x minus 7 times x plus 2. So now what I'm going to do is, since I have this times this equals 0, I know that one of them has to equal 0, so we set them both equal to 0. And now these are going to be my solutions as I use my inverse operations to solve. So x equals 7, x equals negative 2. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you factor to solve a quadratic by using the box method. Thanks.